sound test. Bunyata. Okay. We praise the Lord for that uh, physical rendition. And I thank Him for this opportunity to be with you this morning and be a part of your prayer camp. And so my assumption is this camp will be full of prayer. But my challenge that I would like to give unto you this morning is this will not just be a program, but from this time and on, you will really be a prayerful Christian. And uh, wala pang nalabasan. Meron ba? <laughs> and uh, at the outset of my uh, lecture this morning, I would like you to choose a prayer partner. You are not going to pray at uh, this moment, but I would like you to choose a prayer partner of the same sex, not your boyfriend or your girlfriend, okay? So the same sex, perhaps your friend, your your seatmate, your roommate, okay? Somebody who is, uh, you have an influence and uh, that somebody has influence also over you, okay? So let us do it now. Before I start, choose and make a covenant with that somebody that at least you are going to pray for each other for one month. One month. Choose your partner. Choose your partner. Everybody, I will ask you, do you have your partner now? Okay. May I see your hands, those who have already your prayer partners. May I see your hands, please. Prayer partners. All right. What about there? At the do sa dulo. Do you have your prayer partner already? Okay, is it settled? Did you find your prayer partner? All right. Just to be sure that everybody has a partner. All right. And initially, your covenant is that you are going to pray for one month. One month. Initially. And I'm going to give you the details. I'm going to give you the details of additional things that you need to know and what to pray for. I heard a while ago that in your sun, sunrise worship, you were given the challenge to pray. And uh, one who gave the remark said, we just do not know what to pray and what to pray and how to pray. And uh, this morning, I am going to give suggestions when to pray, what to pray, and how to pray. But before discussing when, what, and why, it is very important to understand the reason why, why do we need to pray. The title of my presentation this morning is Discipling All Nations. Discipling all nations. How? Okay? Discipling all nations or making disciples of all nations. And it is something to do with the methodology. How are we going to make disciples of all nations? Question. Why do we need to disciple all nations? Could you please open your Bibles? In the book of Matthew, chapter 24, verse 14. Matthew 24, verse 14. Sinong nakakita na? Will somebody please read Matthew 24, 14? New Testament, Gospel according to Matthew, chapter 24, verse 14, please. Okay, and this gospel of the kingdom shall be preached into all the world as a witness to all nations, and then 
and then the end shall come. We are aware that the coming of the end equals the second coming of Jesus Christ, right? And that's the reason why we are Seventh-day Adventists. Because we are longing and we are waiting for so many years now for the second coming of Jesus Christ. But according to the passage, the end will not come not until the world has been discipled or the world uh, we were able or we are able to preach the gospel into all the world. Again, can you please open your Bible in the book of Revelation chapter 14 verse 6 and 7. 14, 6, and 7. Next slide, please. Okay, what do we have there? Kindly read, please. What do you call this part of the scriptures? Anong tawag dito? Huh? We call it the three, and we just read the first angel message, but we are aware that this is the three angels message. Alright? And the three angels message actually is about the seventh day Adventists. How can the angel be the seventh day Adventists? How can the angels be the Seventh-day Adventists? Young people, in the Bible, angels could mean not flying angels with white robe, with wings. Angels in the Bible could mean messengers. Again, what's the word? Messenger. And remember, you are, being a Seventh-day Adventist, you are a messenger for the Lord. And a messenger actually bears a message. Remember that. You are a messenger because you are having and you are bearing a message. And what, what message do you have as messengers of the Lord? The first message according to this angel actually is, you know, the angel is proclaiming the everlasting gospel. The angel is proclaiming, you as messenger, you are proclaiming, you are preaching the good news, the gospel. Just a survey. How many of you understand what the gospel is? May I see your hands? Do you know what the gospel is all about? What is the gospel? The life and teachings of Jesus? B+. plus. Yes. You have been my student? Not yet. Okay, very good. A. John 3.16, okay, keep this in mind. John 3.16 best describes what the gospel is all about. God so loved you. God so loves the world. Okay, God loves the world, including you and me, that he gave his only begotten son, so that's the life and teaching. But it's not enough. Because for love to be consummated, God is offering his love and we must respond to it. God so loved the world that he gave his only son that whosoever believes in him should not perish but have an everlasting life. Everlasting life is impossible without you responding to his love. The gospel cannot be a gospel without your answer to his call. If you're not going to respond to Jesus Christ every day, the gospel will not be consummated. It will not be finished. And so, I hope now you understand what the gospel is all about. Okay? God revealed himself and we responded to God's revelation of His love. 
then and only then, we will have the assurance of life eternal. Now, the second message is, Fear God, give glory to Him, for the hour of His judgment is come. Worship Him who made the heavens and the earth and the fountains of water. Now, let me tell you that all this preaching, all this teaching and doctrines, they are all embodying the doctrines of the Seventh-day Adventist Church. Fear God, it has something to do with the commandment obeying people. Obey His commandment. Remember, in the book of Ecclesiastes chapter 12, verses 13 and 14. Okay? Fear God and obey His commandments. And then, give glory to Him. When you go to the cafeteria, you will always read, whether therefore you eat or drink, whatsoever you do, do everything for His glory. We have that unique message about hell. Glorify God through that body. That body does not belong to you anymore. It belongs to Him because two times you are mine. We are His. You, be, you belong to Him because once He made you, and second, He bought you with His blood on Calvary. Mine, mine, the song says, mine, mine, two times you are mine. And so, glorify God through that body. For the hour of his judgment is come. We believe that Jesus Christ right now is before the judgment bar of God. And he actually is interceding. He is mediating in your behalf and in my behalf. And so, in the judgment, there is no fear. Why? Because the judge is not against you. The judge died for you. Keep that in mind. Maintain that relationship with Jesus Christ 24-7. Full battery always. Full battery church. Because in Him, there is no fear. You will always have the assurance of God's forgiveness and God's salvation. Amen? And then the last one is, worship Him who made the heavens and the earth. And it's something to do with Sabbath keeping. What's the point? In the three angels message, young people, Long before the Seventh-day Adventist was established in 1863, long before the church was established in 1863, who we are, what we are, and the preaching and the messages that we are going to preach, it was already prophesied in the Bible. Bago pa tayo na itatag bilang isang iglesia, just in Tagalog, but the same thing in English, young people, Bago pa natatag ang Seventh-day Adventist noong 1863, ang ating minsahe nakalagay na sa hula. Before the organization of the Seventh-day Adventist Church in 1863, who we are and what will be our messages are, they are already given in the prophecy in Revelation chapter 14. Thus, let me tell you that the Seventh-day Adventist Church is the church in prophecy and as a church in prophecy our church bears the prophetic message and mind you while we can say amen to that we have the challenge God has given us our prophetic mission God has given us our prophetic mission we call the Revelation 14, three angels message as the last warning message into the world. And you have it now. Preaching the gospel throughout the world, you have, I, we have our prophetic mission and our prophetic message. Next slide, please. Thus, every member of the Seventh-day Adventist Church should be concerned about our missiological purpose before the second coming of Jesus Christ. This gospel of the kingdom shall be preached into all the world. In your prayer, are you praying for the finishing of God's work on earth? Do we include other people who have not yet heard about Jesus Christ? Or are we concerned only about ourselves? 
our immediate family members, and our immediate community? Do you pray for the loved ones of the Lord outside there? Let me have a little survey. How many, are, how many of you are praying for Buddhists? Raise see your hands, please. Praying for Buddhists. All right, we are not. And I cannot blame you. Why? Because as of the moment, we are not so much aware that even the Buddhists and the Muslims, they are loved ones of the Lord. God so loved the world. He gave His only begotten Son. It includes not only our, our family members, the loved ones of the Lord includes the Buddhists and the Muslims, the Hindus, the animists in China. You see, Jesus Christ died for them. But who will tell them about our Savior? You see, that is our mission. That is our calling. Now, next slide, please. Now, in the Seventh-day Adventist Church, in my assumption, there are three attitudes in the church. There are three kinds of Seventh-day Adventists. Number one, we have the revivalists. Yeah, and this is actually the group that we need in the church. They are concerned about revival. Revival and reformation. Okay, and they try to fix their lives Okay, doing everything, necessary changes, transformation, so that they can be fitted for heaven. But uh, sad to say, among, among them, we have an extremist group. Extremist. Uh, and because they are so extreme in their revival, okay, they are so extreme in their revivalism, and so some of them tends to be judgmental. All right? They, they tend to be judgmental because you are not just like what I am. You are not practicing what I'm practicing. Oh, therefore, you will not be pitted for heaven. And sometimes because of that extreme attitude, they go out from the church. And they become an option of the church. And we have this. Revival is good. But please, do not be an extremist. To the point that you will be thinking that because of your good deeds, because of your transformation, that will be your passes, that will be your ticket for heaven. No, 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 young people. That will never happen. Because look at this. What amount of good deeds and transformation is necessary for you to earn salvation and to enter the pearly gates of heaven? Have you, have you ever realized, gaano ba tayo dapat kabanal para tayo ay mahanda at maging akma sa langit? Can somebody tell me? Can somebody tell me? Paano, how, what, to what extent of righteousness and holiness, diba? the level of holiness that we need to achieve, that we can say, oh, I'm ready for heaven. Will there be that point Will that time will come that you can say, Oh, I'm the, the righteous one? That will never happen. The point actually is like this. All of us, brothers and sisters, young people, all of us are dependent. All of us are only dependent on the perfect righteousness of Jesus Christ. And that is why we have the assurance that through our faith and our genuine relationship with Jesus Christ, we can be assured of His perfect righteousness. And you need it. Day in and day out, you need the perfect righteousness of Jesus Christ. I need the perfect righteousness of Jesus Christ. That is only the guarantee that I will be entering the pearly gates of heaven. Not because, young people, not because of what you are, not because of what I am, you will be saved. 
because of what God is. Our God is a gracious God. Our God is a merciful God. Our God is a forgiving God. So that whenever you come to Him, He will forgive you. If you come to Him in repentance, He will cover you with the blood of Jesus Christ. And you will be, you will be garbed by His perfect righteousness. By faith, this righteousness belongs to you. And that is for free. It is not by works. It is a gift from God. Now, and so we have the revivalist. The second one actually is the pragmatist. Pragmatism from the word pragmatism. And when you, uh, when you uh, try to see the meaning of the word pragmatist or pragmatism, it is something to do with something practical. What should I do? What should I eat? What should I say? Should I do this? Should I wear this? Should I go to that place? Is it practical? And so, when they make decision, they value and they ask the question, what are the benefits? Is it practical? And when they see that it seems practical, they go on to it. And because they are so practical, yes, they turn to be lukewarm. Did you get it? Kasi sama siya doon sa hangin. What is the passion of the day? And what is the most practical thing? They go to it. The pragmatist. Then the last one, we have the missiologist. The missiologist attitude, and I would like you to have this kind of attitude starting today, they are actually concerned about God's mission. They are concerned about God's mission, and they have in mind the finishing of the proclamation of the gospel throughout the world. To summarize, number one, we need to enhance the attitude of the revivalist in us. Continuous sanctification by the grace of God. Transformation. Okay? Obedience to the will and to the law of God. Through the grace of God, we need to be changed. Okay, from glory to glory. We have that, we have that battle of faith, diba? experience of faith. We need to change and to grow for His glory. And then, only we should avoid the extremist attitude, yung being extreme. Okay? We, must, we must be reformed and transformed inside this body, the church. And then, let us avoid to be a pragmatist, lukewarm. God does not like it. And then, number three, I hope that today we will be able to step forward and start the journey of being a missiologist. Meaning to say, in your mind, in your prayer, the mission of God is included. Next slide, please. How does the church power in the, in the, the, the evangelization of the world? Do you know what? If you go to some non-Christian countries, and if you are going to ask them about Jesus Christ, do you know who the character that they have in mind? They have in mind not that somebody hanging on the cross, but what they have in mind actually is a man with a big tummy, and a white long beard and garb in, in, a, in a red attire. Sino yun? Ho, 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 ho. Merry Christmas. They have in mind, when mentioned about Christianity, what they have in mind actually is Santa Claus. Yeah, because you see, celebration of Christmas is very much associated with Christianity. So that in the mind of many people, what they have in mind about Christianity is the personality of Santa Claus. But is this Christianity? No. What's the point? Do you know what? Almost one half of the world's population does not know very well Jesus Christ. How can Jesus Christ come? When he said, 
And this gospel of the kingdom shall be preached to all the world as a testimony to all nations, and then the end shall come. Paano darating ang Panginoon? Okay? Let's move on. Here is my suggestion. We have 18 million members throughout the world, 18 million Seventh-day Adventists, and how, how, how many people do we have in this planet Earth? Six billion? More than six billion, going to seven billion people in the world, and we are only 18 million Seventh-day Adventists. All right? Now, how are we going to preach the gospel into this world? Let us look. And we should learn, we should look at the experience of the apostolic church and how, on how they carry out the gospel commission to the then civilized world during the beginning of the Christian church. Next slide, please. This is quoted from the book of Ellen G. White. And this is from the Acts of the Apostles. And the chapter is about the Pentecost. It says there, The disciples prayed, Here is your prayer now. The disciples prayed with intense earnestness for a fitness to meet men in their daily intercourse to speak words that would lead, that would lead sinners to Jesus Christ these days of preparation were days of deep, deep hurt searching. And open times, 10 minutes. Okay. How? Okay, 10 minutes. Okay. Uh, so they pray. Let me, Pastor. Next slide, please. Next slide, please. The disciples felt their spiritual need and cried to the Lord for the holy unction that was to fit them for the what? For the what? For the work of soul saving. They did not ask for a blessing for themselves merely. Next slide, please. And I highlighted, oh no, I, I underlined. They were weighted with the burden of the salvation of souls. They realized that the gospel was to be carried where? To the world. And they claimed the power that Christ had promised. Is it, is it not our intention why we have this prayer meeting, prayer come for us to be filled with the Holy Spirit? Let me tell you, after being filled with the Holy Spirit, we will not at once go to heaven. The empowerment of the Holy Spirit is not meant uh, outrightly or consequently by our translation to heaven. Okay? The empowerment of the Holy Spirit actually is meant for the finishing of God's work on earth. Just like the experience of the disciples. Next slide, please. So... What could we learn from the disciples? They were all concerned about their mission to the world. Oh Lord, how can we preach the gospel throughout the world? And they prayed, and they prayed, and they prayed for the power of the Holy Spirit. And so it happened during the Pentecost, and you know the story from the book of Acts. Next slide, please. Next slide, please. So, they were all concerned about their mission to the world, they all become missionary-minded, and they, as one person, unitedly pray how to carry out their mission into the world. And that is the kind of direction that I would like to give you as my challenge. Are we unitedly praying in order for us to carry out our mission of proclaiming the gospel into the world? Add it in your checklist. Next slide, please. And because, and because they prayed, do you know what happened? God poured out the power 
of the Holy Spirit. Let me tell you, discipling all nations how? We will be able to disciple all nations, young people, through the power of the Holy Spirit. But remember, it did not come without them. All of them, 120 of them, they unitedly prayer in that upper room. Alright? The question is, how can we do that? Alright? Next slide, please. What happened? What, the, what are the results? Next. Yeah. They started to speak in different languages. Okay? So then, when they spoke in different languages, people from different parts of the world, they were able to speak. They were able to speak the language of these people, and un they were understood, and as a result, many thousands of people accepted Jesus Christ. How many of you know, how many of you know how to speak Greek? Or Mandarin? Only few. you. Do you know what? Language is very important in mission. But instantly, they were given the power to speak different language. Next. Signs and wonders. They were able to perform signs and wonders. Miracles. Next slide, please. As a result, the church grew. Thousands were added. Next. Churches were, were multiplied from addition going to multiplication. Next slide, please. They turned the world upside down. In, in other words, the early disciples, they were able to proclaim the gospel in the civilized world then. They were successful in preaching the gospel in the beginning of Christianity. Power of the Holy Spirit. Next slide. Okay, please. They spoke different languages. They healed the deaf, the mute, lame, and the blind. What else? If you are going to survey what they were able to do to the power of the Holy Spirit in the book of Acts, Peter and Paul were given the power to raise the dead. Do you know what? In one instance, people in the community, they put their sick and their, uh, their sick and deceased loved ones along the way where the disciples would pass because they believed the mere shadow, the mere shadow of the disciple would mean healing, would mean healing to their loved ones. That's the power of the Holy Spirit. Have you seen it today? And then, dead would be raised back unto life. Do you know what? In the experience of, in the experience of Tabitha, Dorcas, when Tabitha was, was raised back to life by Peter, oh, the whole community, they believe in Jesus Christ. And then it says there, uh, kindly, okay, Philip, for example, the angel and the Holy Spirit the angel, according to the record, the angel and the Holy Spirit directly, they were communicating with the disciples. For example, to Philip, the, the angel and the Holy Spirit said, go there, approach the man, explain his word. And then after that, the man, the eunuch, was baptized. And then after the eunuch was baptized, if you will find the record in Acts chapter 8, it says there that again Philip was taken by the Holy Spirit in the place called Asutus. From the place where he baptized the man going to Asutus, do you know what? It takes three days travel. It takes three days travel and the Holy Spirit brought him to Asutus. From this place, you will be brought, for example, by the Holy Spirit in China. And that is for you to speak the words of wisdom, the gospel to the people who are ready to hear the message of the Lord. Miracles and wonders happen. Next slide, please. And so as a result, the disciples were able to fulfill the commission of Jesus in the beginning of the Christianity of Christianity through the power of the Holy Spirit. Next slide, please. Great was the result of the outpouring of the early rain or the Holy Spirit but greater will be the result of the latter rain. How many of you have heard, have heard about the latter rain? May I see your hands, please? How many of you have heard the latter rain? Okay? The latter rain actually is the power of the Holy Spirit that will be given by God 
to be able to be sealed into the truth and to be able to proclaim, to finish the proclamation of the gospel throughout the world, not only in AUP. Next slide, please. Thus, it is through the power of the Holy Spirit that, that the world evangelization could be realized. Next slide, please. The challenge now is how to lead our members and become missionary-minded. Now, we are now in the how. Next slide, please. Three things. One, we can go for God's mission. Number two, we can give for God's mission. Members can give for God's mission. Number three, members can pray for God's mission. And that is your intention for coming here. Next slide, please. But look at this one. Only some can go. How many of you would like to join the 1,000 missionary movement? The Philippine Frontier Mission. Only some have that desire. Only some can go. Many can give. But I would like you to give you the enlightenment this morning. All of you can pray for God's mission. Amen? Amen. That is my challenge. Include that in your prayer. Now, at what are you going to pray for? All can pray for God's mission. Give me more five minutes. Huh? Through prayer, we can lead our members to become missionary-minded. Next slide, please. We need only to teach them the structure and the subjects that they need to be included, that needed or that need to be included in your prayer. Now, what is the structure? By twos. That's the organization. You have your prayer partner now. And I have already set the structure. What do you need to include in your prayer for one month? Next slide, please. Members could be grouped by twos as prayer partners. Next slide, please. What to pray for? Each other's, you can pray for each other's concern. Examination, tuition fee. So you pray for each other's concern. And then, Local and international missionary entities. Please include in your prayer one missionary entities. For example, you can include the 1,000 mission, 1, missionaries missionary. You can include, for example, in your prayer, the Adventist Pointer Mission missionaries, the Philippine Pointer Mission missionaries, and the Maranatha volunteers, or any other missionary entity in your own context. If you are coming from Africa, or from Thailand, or from Singapore, whatever country, you can include in your prayer any missionary entity in your country. All right? What else? We are praying for our loved ones. So let me see. Can we go back to the slide, please? Because there's, there's, there's still one thing that we need. We should include in our prayer any of the unreached and unchurched people in the world. Lastly, include, for example, the Buddhists in India. Choose a country. Choose one unreached country. Choose one unreached people's group in your prayer. Did, did you get what I mean? So what do we need in our prayer? It's others concerned, one missionary entity, let us pray for one unreached country or one unreached people group in the world. Next slide, please. You see, as I said a while ago, we are praying for our loved ones. But we fail to pray for the loved ones of the Lord. And who are the loved ones of the Lord? Next slide, please. The loved ones of the Lord include include the Muslims, the Buddhists, the Hindus, and other growing religions and people group around the world. And there are many of them, young people. Next slide, please. Each prayer partner will agree to pray at their designated time or in conjunction with the 7-7. Now, do not make an agreement that you are going to pray at 12 o'clock uh, midnight. Why? It's a burden. It's a burden. 
pray, make an agreement that you are going to pray for each other in your convenient time. Do not punish yourselves. Set your time in the most convenient schedule. Now, do you need to be together? No. Whether, for example, you are here in AUP and your partner actually is back there at home, according to your agreement, every 9 o'clock, for example, we are going to pray for each other. 9 o'clock in the evening. If that is your agreement for one month, then do it. Include the things that you need to pray, as I have enumerated a while ago. Next slide, please. Now, they should be specific. In the prayer partnership, they can agree to pray for each other for one month or more. Choose one mission group, missionary group, and choose one foreign religion to be included in their prayer. Next slide, please. A Christian is being passioned and molded and influenced by the things that he or she is praying for. What you are praying unto the Lord. What are your prayer requests unto Him? It has been experienced that you are being influenced by the things you are asking in your prayer. Is your desire to have a new iPhone? Is your desire to have a new boyfriend? Do you pray for it? Do you know what? It affects your character. But do you include in your prayer the mission of God? If you are going to include in your prayer the mission of God, then you will become missionary minded. Because a person is being molded and passioned by the things he or she is including in his prayer. Okay? When institutions, when students of AUP, when different departments of the church become so concerned about mission that they pray by twos, not only for their loved ones, but also for the loved ones of the Lord, worldwidely, then, just like in the time of the Pentecost, God will pour out His Holy Spirit upon His children. Amen? What will happen next? When we preach the good news about Jesus, it will be aided with signs and wonders and miracles. And we cannot actually imagine what can the Holy Spirit do through a Spirit-filled Christian. When you are filled with the Holy Spirit, just can just use you miraculously in order to preach the gospel anywhere and to whoever that person may be. Next slide, please. Remember, some can go, many can give, but all can pray for God's mission and take part in worlds in evangelization. Next slide, please. How can we do it? God is able. God is powerful. He gave us the command. And together with the commission, he will give us the power. God bless you all.